Welcome back everyone to On.net. I'm your host, James Montemagno. Today I have one of my best friends in the entire world with me, Adrian. How's it going, buddy? Hello, James. Going very well. Thank you so much for having me here. Yes, I'm very excited. And as you can see, we have some awesome IoT devices from our good friends at Wilderness Labs and yes. Meadow Products. Um, and we've done a, a several videos here on the .net YouTube channel, so definitely check out those. We'll put them in the show notes. But today we're literally going to be talking about something that's very, very common, which is connecting different types of hardware to these boards specifically. What problem are we looking to solve here? Absolutely, great question. So when we're building hardware, like when we're building software, we go through a lot of phases of development. And you know, I don't know about you, but you know, often if I've got a software idea, I might just throw some code together, yep. try and get a proof of concept running, and then you have to sit back and go, let's architect this and put it into you know, something that's closer to you know, production strategy and start iterating on the code. Yeah. Well, hardware isn't much different. And we go through a lot of phases of development of hardware. But of course, the challenge with hardware is we've got physical things. Yeah. We've got to change parts sometimes. We've got to change form factors. And so we want to be really strategic about how we go through that hardware development lifecycle. But then also, how do we map the software mm. to that hardware development lifecycle? And a lot of times, we might build a prototype, assemble the parts, write some code to make it run, then realize we need to change some sensors, change some parts. And on some platforms, that does mean rewriting the code from scratch. Got it. So <laughs> in this instance here, um, you know, if you haven't seen the video that we did with Brian, uh, we have this awesome setup here that's basically monitoring how much liquid is in here with some sensors. So here, this is just a sensor that's plugged into a port, right? That's what's happening exactly. right now. Exactly. Yeah. This could be like this. It looks like a prototype. Exactly. Yeah. And and this is actually what we might call a, a desk prototype okay. or, or a bench prototype. And it's actually kind of perfect, right? It's sitting on a desk. And when we think about a desk or a bench prototype, that's often proof of concept. Mm. Maybe we've got a hardware idea, and we're not ready to fully design the final product. So we're going to grab some things we have handy. Yeah. So in this case, maybe we're doing water levels for a cistern. We want to do maybe industrial application or maybe from like a rain collection for home drinking water in places yeah. that don't have full uh, water service. So that's a great thing. But to go invest in a cistern and industrial hardware at your first step is a big investment, especially yeah. if you haven't fleshed it out. This is perfect. Grab a simple distance sensor. Grab something from your kitchen, your shelf, or you know, from, a, from a convenience store and build out that proof of concept. Gotcha. So what happens, like how would I be modifying this and upgrading in the future? And what would that look like? Yeah, great question. So uh, I've got an example here. So this is an industrial level uh, distance sensor. Okay. This is a product from Maxbotics, um, and I'm personally a big fan of them. Uh, obviously, you can see it's a hardened shell. It's much larger. This might even be a little bit harder to fasten to our container here. But this is something that is meant for you know durable locations and um, and it has a much higher level of accuracy and is meant for long term duration, long usage. Also, typically a higher cost than a lot mm -hmm. of off the shelf distance sensors, especially yeah. about IoT. And so when you choose something like this, you want to be very specific and intentional about it. Whereas you're building a proof of concept, you might not be ready for that level of investment. Gotcha. So and you're saying that uh, often, if I'm writing code for this, it might be different than this. And you're saying that it's different with the Meta platform. Well, of course, all of these parts have effectively different APIs or different communication protocols. And mm. these are a really good example here. So for those of you that are familiar with IoT, uh, we have a sensor on here that's using the I2C bus, which okay. is a two-wire bus. Um, and it's a common protocol. And um, we've got a driver for it for Meadow, and we can get distance data off this. Now, this one, so Maxbotix actually has a range of sensors, but this particular sensor is using UART or serial. Okay. And so a different communication protocol. And so the way we talk to this driver is very different. Gotcha. Um, and you know, the way we handle the data is a little bit different as well. Did you want to take a look at some of the code, or what do you want yeah, to do Yeah, so let me show you. So again, we're talking about differences, but what I really love about the Meadow platform is a lot of these differences have been abstracted away. Oh, okay. Of course, we're C Sharp and .NET developers. We love abstractions. We love writing interfaces because this is how we think. And we're used to this from other platforms. Yeah. Often, we'll do testing, and we'll, we'll inject our test framework so we don't have to always have you know, the production UI. We can in, in, in inject our, our testing uh, frameworks uh, so we can get simulation data. And it's a lot like that for hardware, but we can do this for various stages of hardware. And so let me show you a little bit of code here. So this is the, the tank level monitor source code. And what I love about this is, again, I want you to just pause and look at this. It's, this is Visual Studio 2022, and this does work on a Mac, of course, as well. And this is just its familiar C sharp.net code. Uh, it's actually C sharp 10 level code. We got all the common conveniences of the language. 
And if you look at our code, it's a couple of things that are fun here. So right here on lines 19 and 20. So notice here, we've got a couple lines of code. Hardware type equals you know, bench prototype. And I can uncomment this line. This is lab prototype. And if you look at hardware types, it's just enumeration. Yeah. So it's just C sharp code. So nothing too fancy here. And if we look at our switch statement, notice a couple of things are happening. So we've got some output here just to let us know what phase we're on, instantiating our bench prototype, so our code for our bench prototype versus uh, a lab prototype, something that's a little, little bit closer to what we might do in production. Got it. Now, the important part here is, notice line 26, new tank level bench prototype. So we actually have a class here, and we have another class for the lab prototype. And if I go into the bench prototype class, we're implementing an interface, our iTank level hardware interface. I'm going to jump into this as well. And I love this because it's just D sharp code. And the biggest thing we care about here is this distance sensor property and subtype I range finder, which is a distance sensor. And this is a standard part of the Meadow Foundation API set. And any distance sensor that's in this uh, in Meadow Foundation is going to implement this I range finder oh, interface. Cool. And so what that means is if we code against this interface, we can swap out distance sensors. So I'm not I'm not developing directly against a specific device. I'm just developing against an interface that I'm used to that works with many, many exactly. devices. Exactly. Ah, very and cool. And I don't go yeah. into weeds too much, but this is a lot of fun. We can jump in and, and look at this interface. Let me see if we go to the definition here. And there's some things you'd expect to see here, like mm. it has a distance property, how yeah. far something is away. Uh, we have a distance updated event, right? We want to know when the distance has changed. Uh, and we can trigger a distance measurement as well. And what's beautiful now is we know that all the distance sensors implement this interface, and you can now swap these out. And this is exactly what's been done in this project. Very cool. So in the tank level bench prototype, again, so notice here, so for, the, for this guy, for our desk prototype, we're using what's the VL53, uh, let me get this right, L, I believe this is an L0, oh, I found the model number, but it's a family of uh, time of flight sensors, actually yeah. often used for distance for drones. Oh, wow. Um, so a cool little distance sensor works great, um, and it works over I2C, as I mentioned. That's what's plugged in. That's actually what's on, if you can see, I'm going to bring that over on there camera. You go, there you go. It's, it's hidden up here in yeah. the lid of the jar. Gotcha, very cool. And that's what's measuring distance. But if we want to use, say, our Max Botics, well, I can jump over to the other class. Let's go into the, uh, the lab prototype class. And you'll notice this class looks very similar. It's really it's 22 lines yeah, of code. Yeah, very basic, yeah. They're ba and they're basically the same except for line 19 here on this class where we're implementing the max botic sensor. Very cool. And there's a couple of fun things here. We can see that it's using COM port 4. That's the serial port defined on the Meadow device. And we even do a little bit of configuration. Uh, there's actually sensor classes for Max Botics. This oh. driver is actually very flexible. Uh, I need to check the numbers, but it supports dozens, if not hundreds of different devices from this manufacturer. Yeah. Love this. One line of code set up and ready to go. And then if we scroll on the code just a little bit further, so notice we're setting this hardware uh, property here, our hardware field. And we'll scroll down here, and we're passing this into our main app controller, which is where all of our, our business logic is happening. And so at this point now, we can go in and we're just writing more C-sharp code, but we've, we're basically hardware abstracted here. Very cool. So now we're back into a very familiar place for C-sharp code. And the beautiful thing here is, so if I want to switch now from our time of flight sensor to our industrial distance sensor, all I have to do in the code here, comment out line 19, uncomment line 20, We've got our standard connectors here. I'm going to use this as a uh, Grove connector. And on the Project Lab board, there is a serial Grove connector. It's the middle one here. I can plug this guy in. Nice. And that's all it takes. So we've Boom. now changed it. <laughs> we <laughs> did a lot of code, code. Yeah. and plugged in a device. Very and the cool. beautiful thing is because these different protocols, you can actually leave them both plugged in on this hardware. Oh, very cool. Um, yeah. And I'd love to throw uh, something else in here quickly. So we are currently building off Project Lab, which yeah. is a fantastic platform. I'm a big fan of it uh, because it has all these connectors and it's very flexible. As we go further in our hardware lifecycle, we'll eventually likely, if we're going to go to production, maybe we're going to build a device that we're gonna, we want to make a series of smart cisterns or smart jars yeah. that we want to have in every household or we'll make hundreds of thousands or millions. We're probably going to scale this down. So we might not need a display. Yeah. And again, we're going to pick different parts, so we're going to edit, maybe remove parts, create a custom PCV. 
we can take the same approach. So if you look back at our code here, we have our bench prototype and our lab prototype, and we might even go to our production yeah. uh, variations here. And again, we can just implement the interfaces, write C-sharp code, and, and carry on and support all of our hardware versions. That's very awesome. Well, Adrian, thank you so much for showing this off. I love this because it really shows like you might start with a little tiny sensor, add a thing, and then as you scale up, you know, Meadow and the platform is there for you. And I love, like, again, get coding against an interface. There's nothing better than that. Absolutely. It reminds me of all of my Xamarin.net Maui days, right? It's like I have connectivity and it's just one API. Who cares what iOS, Android, whatever we're doing? Doesn't matter what sensor, you care about the data coming off of it. That's really cool. We'll link in the show notes to this project, everything, and all the other videos on Meadow as well. Adrian, thank you so much. This is awesome. Thank you, James. Awesome. Well, thank you all for <laughs> tuning in. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with all your friends that are building or interested in IoT solutions. And stay tuned for more right here on the Donna YouTube. Thanks for watching.